You can tell an awful lot about whether somebody is walking in slavery or sonship by listening to their perspective about a proposed venture. If somebody has a spirit of slavery, they will typically either see the costs or the benefits of the given situation. You listen to one set of slaves, and as you propose going on vacation, they will be quick to say, well, the prices are really high in July, or it's really hot there, the traffic will be heavy. They can list all of the things that could potentially go wrong. On the other hand, a different set of slaves will look exclusively at the benefits. They want to go on vacation here because there's good shopping and the waves are good for surfing and there's all the awareness of the self-gratification that they could achieve. The mark of someone with a spirit of sonship is an individual who can look honestly at both sets of data. Not this, not that, not base their decision on part of it, but to evaluate the whole of the dynamic and then determine what they're going to do. Notice the way in which Moses addressed this issue when he, with his spirit of fathering, sent the 12 spies into the land. Chapter 13 in Numbers, verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. First of all, the scope. Let's do a thorough examination. Don't just go on first reactions. He said, see what the land is like. That's an asset. And whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many, that's a liability. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land, for it was the season for the first ripe grapes. He demonstrated his understanding of fathering by instructing the slaves to bring back a picture with all of the data. He did not want a rosy, cheery, non-reality picture of all of the good, and he didn't want just a record of all the obstacles. He needed to have data on both sides to be able to make an intelligent decision. Now, as we pursue the theme, not just how to father better, um, but how to be better sons, I would encourage you to sit down consciously and look at three events in the future. One event that's fairly close to you, the report you're going to present at 10 o'clock on Wednesday to the boss. Another one that's a little further out, the vacation you're going to take, and one that's maybe four or five years out, your daughter's graduation from high school. Pick a few of these events and practice the art of making a list of the good things that will come, the payoff, and another list of the liabilities, the risk, the things that could go wrong, the problems, the expense, just to find out where you are in the spectrum. Just find out if you default to the cost or you default to an unrealistic perspective of everything that could go right. And once you have done this exercise three times with a immediate, a near, and a far event, you should have a little bit of an idea of where you need to dial in as a son. Once you understand whether you tend to look at the negative side, what can go wrong, or you tend to look through rose-colored glasses, then step back and look at your relationship with God the Father. Look at a concrete situation where God is directing you to do something and assess both the pros and the cons. I'm going this week on an assignment to Texas. By the time you listen to this, the assignment will be over. And in anticipation of that trip, there are things that could go well, there's things that could be difficult. There are some things I'm thoroughly looking forward to. Other things are so vague, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to walk it out. But I know that what my propensities are. I know that on my two appointments for Tuesday night, 
my propensity is to see everything that could go right. So I need to take a step back and see if there's any liabilities that I need to take into account before I rush into them. I know that my Wednesday morning appointment seems to be very dynamic and alive and, and happening and a, a good place to go. So I need to balance that by saying, okay, are there any traps of the enemy that maybe I need to consider? So I go through the, the schedule listening to my soul with its imbalanced perception. I like this. I don't like that. I feel safe here. I don't feel safe there. And my soul gives a very slavish reaction. And once my soul has sounded off and expressed what it feels, then my spirit says, yes, that's interesting data. Now let's round out the picture so that we can see this more from God's point of view. I don't know if anybody that walks in perfect objectivity all of us have a bias one way or the other, depending on our generational memories, our experiences, our bumps, bruises, our celebrations. And as I said, we'll vary immensely. We'll be cautious about this, excited about that. As we move through the day, the week, the month, we'll be all over the board. And that's why it is necessary to embrace the discipline of genuinely looking at both the cost and the benefit with careful eyes before we make a decision about a particular enterprise.